We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Notice something here. We're talking about the human spirit. We're talking about how David said that God would light his candle. And we know that Adam's candle went out when he sinned. He was walking in spiritual darkness. And the very thing that Adam had before he sinned was perverted. He had faith in God. He had faith in God's provisions that he had provided for him. And the Bible says that when God came to walk in the cool of the garden after Adam's sin, he hid himself because he was afraid. Where did that fear come from? came from the darkness that was in him. See, his faith was perverted to fear. Satan always perverts. See, fear is perverted faith. It's just faith in reverse. But now, Jesus has made the statement that if the eye be single, the whole body is full of light. And you can understand that. Now, when you bring that over into the spirit realm, he's trying to get to us that the human spirit is the thing that enlightens us. And he said, when you close your eyes to the truths of the Word of God, like these people did here. See, if you read some of the other scriptures about that, you'd think that God closed their eyes, because in places it reads that way, their eyes he has closed. But if you find here that Jesus said they closed their eyes, it was because great light come, and because they were satisfied with darkness, they closed their eyes. Now, this is what happens sometimes in religious circles. Now, people don't do this because they want it this way. It's because that religion is blinding. When you become indoctrinated, you quit thinking. When you quit thinking, you're going to get in trouble. So we always need to keep an open mind to what the Word of God says. And just because it's not exactly the way that we've been taught it, let's see if that's what it really says. See, there's people that has great light in the area of salvation. Yes, praise God, God will save you. Just repent, God will save you. Yes, the Lord will forgive you. But no, he doesn't heal anymore. That went out with the apostle. Well, now, see, here's a man that's walking in the light of what he knows. But maybe because of what he's been taught, he'll never enter into the provision of divine healing that's available now. See, even though he's saved and on his way to heaven, if he died, he'd make it to heaven, all right. But if he gets sick, he may get there quick because he don't believe in divine healing. See, he thinks it went out with the apostles. <laughs> and you can understand that. If you'd been taught that all your life, then you'd believe that way. Any of us would. But you see, that's where it becomes dangerous when we allow ourselves to be indoctrinated and not keep our spirits open to what God reveals into our spirits. See, Jesus said the Holy Spirit, when he has come, he'll teach you all things and guide you into all truths. See, take the word of God and read it aloud and voice aloud, Holy Spirit, reveal to my spirit what this really means. I'm going to forget everything I ever heard about it. And I'm going to read it like I never heard it before. Now, you see, you've opened your spirit to the Word of God and to the light, so God can bring light. Now, when you close the eyes of your spirit to the light that God brings, then you see, it's not God closing your eyes, it's you squinted at the light. And I've had people say to me, well, you know, I just can't see that. Well, just keep reading it, it's there. See, what they mean, they can see it, they can see it with their natural eye, but in their spirit. They just can't get it down in there because of the way they've been taught. Then right on the other hand, you may have an individual, see, that's highly developed in getting their healing. Well, blessed be God, thank God, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Just don't have any trouble with that. But over in the area of finances, they just bomb out, just can't believe God for a dime to save their life. Well, just don't know whether it's God. You know, they taught me that you had to be poor to serve God. Well, the Bible says, see, go to the Word of God, see what God says about it. Let me tell you, if you're going to follow men's doctrine, you're going to be confused all your life. There's a lot of theologians that's so confused, they don't know who they are. 
But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is the teacher, the Holy Spirit. When he has come, he will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't need any other teaching. Because, you see, you've got to get somebody to get your mind directed and get your mind to thinking on some of these things, see. If you didn't know anything about what the Bible taught about prosperity, you might just swallow everything you heard somebody say. You see, the problem is that some people, all they know about the Bible is what they've heard that somebody said they thought they heard somebody say about it. And they just swallowed it down and said, yeah, you know what the Bible said. And, you know, they quote some chimney corner scripture, you know. <laughs> that, that scripture, it sounds like it ought to be in the Bible, but it's not. You know, <laughs> this is something out of context. <laughs> well, now see this individual, he may be able to get his healing fine. Thank God he pleased. Now, you know why? Because he studied and developed himself in the area of healing. See, he studied it specifically. Now, how does faith come? It comes by hearing the Word of God. So he hears the Word of God concerning healing and provisions for our health that God has made. He reads over there in Psalms 107 and 20 where he said, God sent his Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And he said, Blessed be God, that's me he delivered. It's me that he healed. And he just receives it. But then because of maybe something he's been taught, when somebody comes along and preaches the prosperity message that Jesus bore our poverty for us, oh, bless God, he's preaching some false doctrine. What happened? Light came and it was so much lighter than what he had been taught. He squinted his eyes. He closed his eyes. See, his spiritual eyes now we're talking about. See, Jesus was talking about physical eyes to keep us away from physical obstacles. But when we have darkness in our spirit, then we stumble in these areas when God designed the spirit to enlighten us in all these things. See, in the areas of finances. Because over a period of years, I developed myself and confessed what God said about it, studied the scriptures on prosperity, and confessed the scriptures on prosperity until it got into my spirit, and it enlightened my spirit. And I knew certain things that I knew, that I knew, that I knew, that I knew, and I didn't know how I knew. But I knew it. I could look at a piece of land and tell you that it would be much more valuable in a few years than it was now. And God would lead me by my spirit to purchase a piece of land. And your head would tell you, you know, and you couldn't get your head to agree with it sometimes. But in your spirit, God would lead you and guide you. Delight. Because whatever I do will prosper, and no weapon formed against me will prosper. Entrance of the word bring a light. Now, a fellow that says, well, I just don't know whether it's God's will for me. You know, sometimes God has to get you in the valley to teach you anything. In the valleys where the flowers grow. Yeah, and let me tell you something. There's rattlesnakes and water moccasins down there, too. <laughs> Paul says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. For your sake he became poor. Why did Jesus become poor? See, people say, well, Jesus didn't have anything on this earth. Didn't even have a place to lay his head. Didn't even have a house he could call his own. You know why he didn't? He suffered poverty for you. So you wouldn't have to. You may, but you don't have to. It's not God's will that you suffered. That's what I'm saying. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet he became poor, that ye... You know who ye is? That's you. You, through his poverty, might be made rich. Somebody said, oh, Brother Caps, he's talking about spiritually. Well, the law of double reference, that could include that because we know that that's true in the spiritual realm. But read the context of that scripture there in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. The whole chapter is talking about finances, not talking about anything but money. That's what it's talking about. In fact, there's two chapters there talks about that. So the context of it is talking about 
money. Jesus was poor that ye might be made rich or have abundance. That's what rich there means, just means abundance. You'd have enough to meet your need and give to others. Amen. Amen. Now see, that's light. That is so much light to some people's spirit and to their mind that they close their eyes to it. Oh no, no, I can't receive that because I was taught this way. Well, it doesn't matter how you was taught. What does the Word say about it? See, don't close your eyes to the truth. The entrance of the Word will bring light, but if you reject the light, you've closed your eyes. Can you see that? Amen. Well, you can't see it if you've got your eyes closed, can you? <laughs> the entrance of the Word does bring light. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So God sent us His Word because that's His will. How many of you know the Word of God is the will of God? Amen. So if you find it in the Word of God, and don't take it out of context then that is the will of God for you. See, now it may not happen to you just because it's in the Scripture. Because these things won't happen to you. You won't be rich just because you find that Jesus bore your poverty that you might be rich. You're going to have to believe it and act on it. See, sometimes people don't have faith to believe for God's provisions. God's made provision, but they don't have faith to act on it. You know why they don't have faith to act on it? Because they've closed their eyes of their spirit to the Word. Now, we've been talking about understanding the human spirit for two weeks here on the broadcast, and I know that some of you have been hearing parts of it, and you've missed part of it, and you're thinking, well, what did he say about this, and what did he say about that? You know, one thing about CD, if you can back them up and find out what you said over again, you know, I've tried to back my radio up a few times, but it just simply doesn't work, and I know you've done the same thing. So you that have missed some of the broadcast, or maybe you know someone that needs to hear here, this series entitled Understanding the Human Spirit. Now, this was taken from a live seminar, and we divided it up and made it radio broadcast, so it is the exact programs that you've heard right here on the broadcast, and they're all together on two CDs for $15 plus $4 postage and handling, a total of $19. Understanding the Human Spirit. You remember Proverbs 20, 27 says, The Spirit of Man... Now, that means the human spirit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of his belly. Now, in the Scripture, when it talks about belly, especially in this particular instant and others in the New Testament, it's referring to the human spirit. You remember Jesus said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, he's not talking about in your stomach. He's talking about out of your spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit resides, is in the human spirit. So the spirit of man is the light bulb that God uses to enlighten you, and these will help you understand why sometimes people get in trouble. Sometimes you've gotten in trouble because you didn't listen to the human spirit. Something told you you ought not do that, but you went ahead and did it, and you got in trouble, and we've all done it. But if you understand those impressions when they come, you can miss some of those things. At CD offer number 7229, it's two CDs for a total of $19. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Until tomorrow, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order the product offered today, call 1-877-396-9400. Or write Charles Caps, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. A complete list of CDs, books, and DVDs are available online at charlescaps.com. Through the website, you can listen to this radio program again and subscribe to our podcast. This broadcast is sponsored by Charles Caps Ministries and our listeners in this area.